Seriously? Hey guys, we're tired of 40. I'm sure you know what I'm gonna freeze dry today. So a couple weeks ago, I made a freeze dried dairy video. And I was gonna do milk because there's nothing more dairy than milk. But I decided that I was just gonna do an entire video with just milk. So do all four trays with milk. And believe it or not, I've never done milk in the freeze dryer. I've done the eggnog, uh, and it actually turned out really well. So I'm anticipating that the milk will do pretty well too. Uh, I just, just for a little bit of variety, I'm doing a whole milk and a 2% milk. I'm not sure if it will make any kind of difference. I wouldn't really think that it would a whole lot other than obviously one is 2% one's whole. But um, I know that any kind of liquids that go into the freeze dryer, they, they need to be frozen solid before you put them in the freeze dryer. I learned my lesson on that a couple times. Once was the egg video. Uh, it's just really hard to put anything that's liquid into the freeze dryer because if it's not perfectly level, it just makes a mess. Plus you uh, reduce your capacity quite a bit. I'm going to set these inside the deep freeze and then I'm going to fill them up and we're going to freeze them until they're solid. Alright, we're out of the freeze, which I hardly ever use anymore just because I pretty much freeze dry almost everything that used to go into here. It's looking pretty bare in here, there's not really much in here. A little bit of meat, a little bit of bread. So I'm hoping that my deep freeze is level or we're not gonna be able to maximize our, uh, our tray level, but I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. All right, here's the last of it. I got these real, real, real full. Hopefully this doesn't come back to haunt me later. So there's how much milk is left out of both gallons. Uh, just over a gallon and a half, I would say. I, I combined the, the leftovers from the other one and put it in the, the other carton just so we could see. Just about a gallon and a half of milk in the medium size with four trays. And just for super scientific purposes, I think I'm gonna label the trays just to uh, see what the difference, if any, there is in the freeze-dried end product. All right, our milk's been sitting overnight here. Looks really good. Everything's solid, no spillage so far. I'm gonna go set the freeze dryer and pre-freeze for a half an hour, and then we're gonna throw these trays in. All right, we're gonna go to customize, adjust cycle times. We're gonna leave the final dry at seven hours, which I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I have on my cheat sheet, so that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna hit start and pre-frozen. We're gonna pre-freeze for half an hour. And then I also wanna talk about my vacuum pump and I've never really talked about it, but all these vacuum pumps, even the oilless pump, run really, really, really hot. So a good idea, something that I've done and it's helped a whole bunch, is to put a little fan on it like this and just keep the fan going. I mean, the fan, the amount of power that that little fan takes is very minimal, but it keeps this whole housing really cool, and it just seems like it runs a lot better. It's got to help with the uh, the life of the pump, I would think. So, if you get a second, or you're thinking about it sometime, just go buy one of these little $10 fans or whatever at Walmart or somewhere cheap. I'm sure you can pick them up for just about nothing, just as a little cheap insurance policy. So interestingly enough, the milk when it freezes turns kind of a yellow color. I don't know if you can see that very well. Kind of weird, not milk white for sure. But I've got my two, 2% two on the bottom, my hole on the top. And I'm gonna get this thing going. Thirty-six hours, and we've got about three hours left. Uh, that's going to put me real early in the morning, so I'm actually just going to add some time onto this, and I'll just uh, pick up where I left off in the morning. All 
All right, so in all fairness, this took about 40 hours. Uh, in order to bring this to you on video, I had to put some time onto it just so I could uh, so I could get it recorded and be able to do the whole process uh, without having to do it at two o'clock in the morning. So this pump's been running for 40 hours and like I was saying, because this fan is on here, um, I mean, it's cool to the touch. Normally it would not be, you wouldn't even be able to touch that, it'd be so hot. This is just barely even warm after 40 hours, which is actually, it's more than 40 hours. It's been like 48 or 49 hours. Okay, here is the whole milk. Here is the 2%. Uh, it did not make a difference in anything. Color is the same. Uh, the, the consistency is the same on everything. I'm gonna throw these into some Mylar bags and some ball jars, and then we're gonna reconstitute. So what I should have done was I should have weighed these before I did this and then you would know exactly how much water to put in this. The volume doesn't change at all. Uh, I mean this is just as full now. It didn't, it didn't shrink up like some stuff does. Obviously it would weigh less because it wouldn't have water into it and you would know how much weight of water to put back in. One thing that I love about things that freeze dry with the consistency of milk is that you can get them, they're in a powder form and you can, you can get them really, really powdery, and you could probably get a whole gallon of milk in this size ball jar, and the powdered stuff tends to store really, really well, and it also tends to rehydrate really well. So it's also in your best interest to get it down to the most powdered form that you can, because otherwise you'll end up with chunks typically when you try and reconstitute it. Okay, so here is the whole milk. Here is the 2% milk. I've got this little coffee frother that we use to uh, froth coffee in the mornings. I think should work just about perfect for this. So I'm just gonna add a little water at a time. I think that's about perfect. All right, both of them look really, really good. I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, you would never know the difference. Let's go try these out on some unsuspecting children. How's it taste? Good. Does it taste like milk? I don't, I don't like it. You don't like it? <laughs> if you add a little bit too much water, it really just tastes like skim milk, just kind of watered down. I'd say milk is in my top five of freeze-dried foods or liquids. Uh, it it freeze-dries very well, it reconstitutes very well, it compacts down into a powder form, which means that it'll store really well. It tastes really good. And just like we saw with the dairy video, what a great thing to be able to store dairy for 20 years with no refrigeration. That would come in handy many, many times. The question of the day is, have you done freeze-dried milk? If you have, feel free to share your comments, your tips. Um, I'd love to know uh, an exact recipe if someone has a good recipe. As far as uh, a measurement of water and a measurement of powder equals milk. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, take a moment to do so. We do some freeze drying, food preservation, we do some cooking, some grilling, and you get to journey with me and my family on retirement at the age of 40. Give me a thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful. Until next time, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week. Don't look, you don't need to look at the camera. All right, action. Yeah. You're soon.